Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Phil and welcome to Grounded, the series which looks at airlines of yesteryear. This episode will take a look at the North East's own Gill Airways. The roots of Gill Airways go back to mid-1969 when ex-RAF man Mike Gill founded Gill Aviation, a Newcastle-based general aviation business. Gill Aviation provided maintenance services for Piper Aircraft and later acted as a regional dealer for the light aircraft manufacturer. The company also offered hangarage and fueling services, as well as local charter work, mainly mail and cargo flights in support of the North East oil industry. Gill Aviation was also responsible for flying instruction at the Newcastle Aero Club, though they would pull out of this by the end of 1971, as it was no longer profitable for the company. Gill would focus on its air taxi work with their Cessna Super Skymaster, Piper Cherokee and Twin Comanche, this also included operating flights for corporate clients such as Barrett Holmes. Gill Aviation continued on through the 1970s until it started to decline in the early 80s and was eventually sold to local business ventures. This change in ownership led to a new direction. Larger Shorts Brothers aircraft were brought in. The Shorts 330 allowed Gill to expand onto some lucrative Royal Mail Skynet flights allowing the airline to grow even more. 1989 would see Gill Aviation rebranded as Gill Air as it launched scheduled passenger flights from Newcastle to Belfast, Aberdeen and Manchester. This was great for Gill Air as it could operate passenger flights during the day and then haul a mail at night maximising profitability. Things were going so well that further Shorts 330s were added along with the slightly larger Shorts 360 which seated up to 39 passengers. Further expansion saw the need to introduce the ATR-42 and 7-2 turboprops into the fleet. The first ATR-42 arrived a couple of days before New Year's Eve 1993, with the second coming the following April. The atr 72s first entered service in 1995 as Gillair was undergoing yet more changes. 1995 would see Gillair be acquired by New Aviation Holdings, with assistance from the investment firm Free Eye, who will have a big part in a future episode. A figure in the region of £7 million was quoted for the cost of both the acquisition and future development of the company, and this really was seen as a positive step. The airline was again renamed, this time to Gill Airways to reflect its larger ambitions. A further four ATRs were added between the takeover and 1998, more scheduled passenger routes were added too, including Newcastle to Dusseldorf, Presswick to Belfast and Donegal, and finally Edinburgh to Leeds. The smaller Shorts 330 was phased out during this time too, but it certainly wasn't bad news as the owners invested in jet aircraft, with the airline securing leases on three Fokker 100s in late 1998, with deliveries beginning in early 1999. The new Fokker jets were used on behalf of Air France operating out of Paris to Newcastle, Helsinki and Gothenburg. The first of these was delivered in February 1999, with the second arriving in March and the third coming that June. Gill also wet leased an ATR to KLM UK and had set up a code share agreement with KLM's German partner, Eurowings. Aside from its own scheduled operation and Air France franchisee flights, Gill Airways continued to operate a lot of sub-charter work and began subleasing out its spare aircraft. One ATR-72 was sent to a new airline called Euroscot Express, the trading name of Happy Jet Limited. They were a small outfit based in Bournemouth of all places and had previously leased a BAC-111 jet from European Aviation Air Charter for a couple of weeks before replacing it with a Gill Airways turboprop. Euroscot Express had took one aircraft from Gill Airways in August 1998 and operated it until July 1999 when they found themselves grounded after failing to secure $5 million in investment. Sadly for Gill Airways, they had themselves incurred a fairly large debt because of this, which the airline would make a valiant effort to recover from. By the turn of the new millennium, Gill Airways was looking a little shaky. They had had a restructure and appointed a new chief executive in February. Towards the end of March, the new chief executive then placed the company into administration. However, unlike other airlines in this situation, 
Gill Airways was allowed to continue flying whilst their administrators, Arthur Anderson, would try and restructure the airline. Gill had previously took over the Bournemouth to Glasgow and Edinburgh routes from Euroscot the summer before and had found itself with a pretty good route network of its own which now featured flights from Newcastle to Aberdeen, Belfast, London Stansted and Teesside Airport. They also operated flights from Aberdeen to Teesside, Norwich and Wick. The Gill fleet consisted of 14 aircraft by mid-2000 with the three Fokkers, three Shorts 360s and four apiece of the ATR 42 and 72 turboprops. A management buyout occurred in early 2001 which would also see Gill Airways emerge from its administration and look into the future. This however wasn't to be, the airline was grounded by the afternoon of September 20 of 2001. So, what went wrong? If you had said it was the US terror attacks barely a fortnight previously, then you're almost right. While 9-11 was the final trigger in many airlines' demise over the coming weeks and months, Gill Airways had turned a corner and escaped administration. It was their financial backers who pulled the plug. The Bank of Scotland was the main creditor to Gill Airways, and while they claimed that Gill was simply one of the first airline casualties of 9-11, if one looks at the bigger picture, it looks like the bankers were to blame. The insurance companies didn't help by demanding airlines pay an 800% increased premium per passenger and a staggering 1,500% increase for war cover, though I am unsure as to how much of this Gill Airways would have faced. From what little information I've been able to gather on the demise of Gill Airways, it seems that there was money in the account when the plug was pulled. However, had it been pulled a week later once the employees had been paid, then Gill would have owed the bank money. I'm not the only one who perhaps has been a bit cynical when wondering if Bank of Scotland had already planned ahead as to when to drop the axe and recoup the most money. Regardless of if the banks were underhanded in what they did with Gill, it was a shame as the airline really had turned a corner. In fact, financially speaking, August 2001 had seen Gill's best month ever. They had a fairly good reputation as the North East's airline, and add to that how a lot of pilots in the North East seemed to gain their wings with the airline, they played a big part in a lot of crews' lives and are sorely missed. Is there a final twist in this story? On the 20th of May 2008, a new Gill Aviation was incorporated. It was registered in Birmingham, and despite the name Gill Aviation, there was zero connection to Gill Airways. Gill Aviation was actually named after Raj Gill, who was launching his own executive jet company, which would quickly rebrand as Cello Aviation. Cello would cease operations in late 2018. I may do a future episode on them. Who knows? Until next time, thank you for watching.